one step beyond. And brought here from Africa. I must live from a land so far. He bid me come here for a I till that soil every day I dug on my knees. I tilled, I toiled, I worked that soil long. I just want to be free. Freedom from what? This land of Trinidad and Tobago has been a symbol of oppression for more than four centuries. That's over eight generations of my kin. I am a people whose descendant is culture of agriculture, yet still, I dislike it. We see it as something that takes away freedom, not something that gives. I grew up on a crop on livestock farm, but I hated it. I hated waking up 5 a.m. every morning to tie out the goats and see about the chickens. I like feeding the ducks, but waking up so early, no thank you. The same thing applied when I returned from school, when my friends would be playing video games and looking at cartoons. I'm busy collecting eggs and shelling peas. I would continuously ask myself on the farm, why? Why should I farm? I made up my mind that I would move furthest away from agriculture and agriculture would be nowhere in my future. I went on to university and pursue a degree in math and physics. <laughs> I was kicked out. <laughs> Required to withdraw, they called it, in being diplomatic. One year later, I reapplied and tried information technology. That immediately didn't work out. And one day, the dean says to me, Alpha, why not try agribusiness? <laughs> agribusiness? What is agribusiness? Agri have business? <laughs> Three years later, first class honors, valedictorian, and I started repping the Caribbean as the youth in agricultural voice. And I would often hear this. <clears throat> Hello, good day, Mr. Senan. You're a vibrant young man and we love your vision. You've created quite a buzz, to tell you the truth. And we love to have you as the voice of the youth. <laughs> and then they gave us a flight on the first, a photo up on the second, summit on the third. But for my voice, zip, not a bloody word. I started realizing that all these conferences and these discussions, it was just lip service. They never wanted to hear what I had to say. A turning point, though, was when I attended the first Global Thought for Food Summit. I was one of 500 delegates at the two-day summit to answer a single equation. How 
do we feed 9 billion people by the year 2050? How's that for solving for one of the world's greatest dilemmas? I finally felt as though I was part of a solution. I finally felt as though my voice will be heard. I returned to my twin island republic of Trinidad and Tobago of just 1,833 square miles and 1.3 million people with a small farming population where the average age of the farmer is 60 years and increasing. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have one of the most fertile soils in the world, but guess what? Our food import bill is four billion US dollars. I immediately pulled out my calculator and I started to work some more equations. We are in the year 2017 and the average age of a farmer is 60. By the year 2050, that farmer might just be dead. Maybe like 93, right? And the very few young farmers which we have, let's say about 30 years of age, by their 2050, they would be 63. They would be retired, or hopefully. Our five and 10 year olds though, hmm, they would be approximately 45 years of age. They would be our young professionals by that year. But the question is, who will feed this 9 billion population by this year? What are our 5 and 10 year olds thinking about becoming do? What are they thinking about? Studies have shown that there's a drastic decrease in youth engagement in agriculture. How can we then put agriculture back into their minds to consider this as a career? We realize that we must make agriculture, agriculture. <laughs> As a child, though, I remember looking at a cartoon called Captain Planet. Mm-hmm. I would be so environmentally aware, pick up the paper, not waste the water. Up to this day, I still remember the Captain Planet song. And I saw some of you remember as well. It goes like this. Captain Planet, he's a hero. He's going to bring pollution down to zero. And I stopped. But something like this is missing for agriculture. There must be an adventure to encourage youth in agriculture. Starting with a main character who's branded as the world's most powerful food provider. Agreement! Boys and girls, I'm the Agreement. The feeder wall is my master plan. If you plant a tree, you can eat for free. This will guarantee food security. From field to farm, just let it sprout so we can put an end to drought. Once we all grow what we need, soon the whole world we can feed. Put it up for argument, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what is it? The, the food imposter has just been spotted. Really? A shipment of fake food is coming into the port. This go, might be our only chance. Go, to run. go get him, go get him. There goes Agriman saving the day again. So we realize that Agriman must not just only teach the kids about farming, he must persuade them to eat healthy, to eat local, to be rice responsible. Yes, I said it. <laughs> rice responsible. Not waste one grain of rice. To show empathy to other children around the world who don't have food. And of course, agri creativity. We can't wait until university to teach the children about food security, nor can we wait until we get a PhD to learn about climate change adaptability. We take the messages of Agriman throughout the schools in Trinidad and Tobago using our agri-edutainment tools. Spoken word, 
poetry, music. What is important is that the problem is creating youth engagement. The solution is creatively engaging youth. We don't only say that they are innovative ways to farm, we show them using our Ponyx cart, our Selfie boxes. Kids are given the opportunity to join the Agriman fan club. After more school visits, teachers would call us and say, the kids are only singing the Agriman song. They would love to come on the farm and grow food with Agriman. Last year, March, we conducted a workshop. We asked the kids to come up with a female version for Agriman. You guys would never believe what name they came up with. <laughs> I'll give you it. Photo Sinta Sister. <laughs> People all over the world saw Agriman to be a solution for youth engagement in agriculture. We were able to launch in over nine countries, Rwanda, Zambia, Nigeria, Haiti. In less than one year, we were able to reach so many people, over 20,000 people. Agriman have worked with over 5,000 students. I started to think about, what if we can go to the cinema one day and look at the amazing adventures of Agriman. What would that do for global nutrition, food, and security? Would that have an impact on our five and ten year olds? What is interesting is that while preparing this talk, I realized that the story of Agriman is my story. It's what I needed as a child, it's what I missed from an early age for me to develop that passion. I believe that Agriman and Photosynthesis must play an integral role in the education of each boy and girl. I am now finally able to understand and answer the question I was asking myself when I was maybe seven years on the farm. And today, you guys will help me answer it. The question of why farm by giving me a simple clap like this. Why farm, you say, if you could, you should. Why farm today, if you don't, who would? Why farm, don't play, the earth need food. Why farm, I say, so for greater good. It's about freedom. It's about freedom. Freedom, freedom from what? Freedom to eat healthy and safe food. Freedom to grow your own food at your own free will. Freedom to become a farmer. Freedom, Freedom to answer why farm. farm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Agriman and Photosynthesis is one step beyond the beyond. Thank Agriman you. Out.